Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Costa and in this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at the two different ways that you can import files into Lightroom. Now, I'm sure there's more than two different ways, but these seem to be the two ways that the majority of people import. So, method one. Basically, a lot of photographers take the card out of their camera, plug it into a card reader, plug the card reader into the computer, and they launch Lightroom and they download directly from the card into Lightroom, copying the files from the card onto their hard drive. That's method one. It's as easy as that. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that method. All right, method number two is photographer takes the card out of their camera, puts it in their card reader, does not launch any applications, but manually drags the images from the card to some location on their hard drive. All right? And then when they're finished, they might drag a second copy somewhere else so they have a backup. And then they launch Lightroom and they import the images by simply adding the images to the Lightroom database or catalog. They simply add them in place. So that is the second method. And again, nothing wrong with it. Doesn't matter to me which method you use, you use the one that you're more comfortable with. Personally, I use method two. The reason being, if I go out shooting all day, it's usually, you know, I'm doing landscape. I'm not doing senior portraits. I'm not photographing weddings. So I might come back with, you know, three eight gig cards. It's late at night, shooting all day. I'm tired. What do I want to do? I want to make sure I get the images off the card onto my laptop, which is the machine I usually have in the field. So I copy them manually, all three of them, one after the other. Then I take that entire folder, copy it to a secondary external hard drive so that I have two copies. And then I launch Lightroom and I tell Lightroom to add those photos in place. And I tell them to, to render a really large preview. And while it's doing that, I go to sleep. Then in the morning, I check those files, make sure they're all okay. As soon as I know they're okay, I can reformat my cards. Okay, so that's just the way I do it. And I'm not trying to convince you to do method one or method two. I'm just telling you why I do method two. The reason I would suggest method two for beginners is that method one, when you're copying from the card to your hard drive, sometimes it's just really hard for beginners to remember where they've copied their files. So let's walk through both of these two scenarios and that way you can make up your own mind which way is going to work for you. All right, excellent. I'll go back to grid view, take this out of lights dim, and we'll see our panels. So how are we going to import our files? Well, first of all, I will click import. And we will start with method one. As you can see over here in my source, I have a card plugged in and Lightroom obviously sees that card. Now, this dialog box kind of reads from left to right. So as soon as I pick my source, we're going to venture towards the middle. And here at the top, it says, what do you want to do with those images? Well, in this case, I want to copy them, right? I want to copy them from this external card onto my local drive. And you can see I've got all of the photos here that we can look at in the grid view and we can scroll down. And if we wanted to, I could go ahead and double click on an image and zoom in and then I could zoom in again if I wanted to check focus. So just like later in the library module, we can look at these images. And the same keyboard shortcuts work too. I can tap G for grid. That basically just takes me back and forth between these two icons, G for grid and E for loop or enlarge. All right, let's go back for grid. Now, just for the sake of time right now, I don't need to import all of these files. So we can actually scroll down and see, what do we have? Oh, okay, so here I was just shooting a bunch of textures. So let's say I just wanna bring these textures in. Now, I know this wouldn't necessarily be what you are doing, right? You probably just have just come back from a shoot. You probably wanna import all your files. I don't wanna take the time to import all the files right now. So I'm actually going to uncheck all of the images and then we'll just select maybe like eight images and then I'll click on the check mark and now we're just importing these files. You can see it used to say something like, I don't know, six gigs here and now it says, oh, I'm only importing eight images and it's only 217 megs. So again, I think in the typical workflow, you would go ahead and just import all of your images, but for sake of time here, I'm just gonna import these eight. All right, so we've looked at our images, we've decided that we're gonna copy them 
And now we need to decide where they're going to go and what we want to do with them. So under file handling, if we're in a hurry, if I want to see these images right away, I will leave the preview rendering to minimal. If I'm going to go off and do something else, if I'm going to pack up my lights or my equipment, or I'm going to go get a cup of coffee, then I could go ahead and set this to standard. That gives me a much larger preview, or I could even go to one-to-one. -to -one. So it just depends on when you want Lightroom to render these previews. Immediately after it starts importing, or do you want to do it when you actually double click on a file in the library module in Lightroom to zoom up and see that image. So for now, let's just stay with minimal. If you want to, because you're making a copy of these images from this card, you can also choose to make a secondary copy to another location. This is really just kind of, kind of an emergency backup. Right? Like you just want to make sure as you download these, the images get stored in two different locations. Because see, after you make the secondary copy, well, you're working on these files in Lightroom. That has nothing to do with the secondary copy. The secondary copy is just going to go sit wherever you told Lightroom to make the copy while you work on your working files in the Lightroom library. Okay. Underneath file renaming, and if you want to, you can go ahead and rename these files. In fact, there's a very convenient rename called custom shoot here, where all I would have to do is type in, in fact, we can just type in Santa Fe here, and then you can see down below, it would go ahead and enter that in and start the numbering here. And you can go ahead and enter in a different number if you want to, but we could just start it at one. It's quite nice so if every time you have a different client come in, if you just want to rename this with the client's name, you could type in that name. All right. Underneath that, what do you want to apply during import? Of course, you can always apply any of the develop settings, any of those presets that you've created or that Lightroom ships with by default. If you wanted to, for example, have all of these images show up um, in black and white or have an infrared film grain effect applied to them, or you can just leave this to none. Of course, if you do apply a, a develop setting, obviously when you get into Lightroom, if you decide that you don't like that, you can always reset the file. So no changes that you're making are going to be permanent. You can always get rid of them if you decide you don't want them. Under the metadata area, this is where I'm going to add my metadata information. In fact, let's just go in and just edit this preset for a minute. I just want to show you here. We'll pick my more recent one. What I've done is I've just entered in very general information. This is the information that I want applied to all of the images that I'm bringing in. So it's not like I'm going to come up here and give it a star rating or something, like, like five stars, because I'm sure that not all of the images that I'm bringing in are going to be five stars. This preset is going to be applied to all of my images, so it should only contain information that should be applied to all of them. All right, let's click Done and see what else. If I wanted to apply some keywords, in this case, these eight images that uh, are coming in, I could keyword Santa Fe, and I could keyword that New Mexico as well. You can see that it kind of did a little auto fill for me. Um, the reason that it put this little carrot here is because I actually have hierarchical keywords. But what I'll do is just put a comma there. That separates keywords. That's a, the more simple way of keywording here. And I could also put in something like texture or something like that. All right, so those are the keywords. Again, I want to make sure that they're general enough because they're going to be applied to all of the images that I have selected. All right, and finally, the destination. Now, this is where you have to pay attention. And I know it's, it's difficult because there's a lot of stuff in this dialog box, but you absolutely have to pay attention to where you're putting your images. You're copying them from the card. Where do you want Lightroom to copy those files? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I want to navigate quickly to my desktop. Well, there are these little arrows right up here. Look at, I can go right to my desktop or to my pictures folder or to any of these other recent locations. So let's start at the desktop. And I want to go to my demo files folder, and I want to go to my photographs. Now you can see that this keeps expanding, and I see all of these different folders. But you should know that you can dock these by simply double clicking. So if I double click on the word photographs here, it's going to hide a lot of those other folders so it's not as confusing, so that the path is very simple. All right, and I want to go to 2011 here. And I want to organize all of these images so they go into a subfolder. And I want to name that folder Santa Fe. All right. 
And when I tap the tab key, you can now see right down here that Lightroom is previewing the folder that I'm going to put these images into. If you don't want to put them into one folder, you can also organize them by date if you'd like to. So you can see here that it's going to add 2011 and 2011 08, the day that I took the photographs. Now, if I was going to do this by date, I probably wouldn't add this Santa Fe folder, right? I would uncheck that. And instead, I wouldn't even select the 2011 folder because it's going to make another subfolder called 2011, and I don't need to duplicate that. So I just go up to my Photographs folder, and now you can see in 2011, it's going to create just this one subfolder for date. But I don't, I don't organize my images by date because I can never remember what date I was ever anywhere. It makes much more sense for me to organize into one subfolder because at least I will remember that in 2011, I actually went to Santa Fe. That much I can remember. The date I was there, not so much. Plus, I can always go in once I've imported them and I can always do filters, like metadata filters, on the date because the date is actually inside each one of the files. All right, so this is method one. You pick your source, which is the card, you copy your files, you tell it where you want to copy and what information you want to add and whether or not you want to rename the files, and then you click Import. Before I click Import, I'll just point out, you can eject the card after Import as well. So I'll click Import, and when I eject the card after Import, I just want you to know that it, it's not erasing the card. Like The photos are still on the card. We don't want to go and erase your card for you. I think that would be silly. Plus, you don't want to erase your card with the computer anyway. You want to reformat your camera cards in the camera. So that will just eject it. All right, and there are our images. And if we come down here into our photographs, into 2011, you can see now that I have the Santa Fe folder, and there are the six images. Excellent. So that is perfectly legitimate way to import your files. Just please remember, where you've copied your images to. All right, the second way, and this is the way that I prefer, and that is to manually copy the images from my card to my hard drive. And again, I already mentioned why I do that. I just do it so that I can copy like, you know, three cards at a time, everything's in one place, and then I can just do one single import and let it render the bigger previews while I do something else. So let's take a look at what that would look like. I'm gonna go to the import dialog again, but this time for my source, You'll notice since it ejected the card, it's no longer there. I'm going to go down to, let's say, St. Augustine. So these images are not in my Lightroom catalog. I have not imported them, but I did drag them from my camera card into this folder that I named St. Augustine using the Finder. So those images are already there. Instead of copying them, this time I'm just going to add them because they're already on my internal drive. So I'm just going to add them in place. I don't want Lightroom to move them or anything. Just pay attention to them. That's all I'm asking Lightroom to do. Now, I don't have as many options over here on the right-hand side. For example, I can't rename my files, but I can go ahead and choose my file handling options, in which case, again, remember, I said if I was going to go to sleep, then I might as well set my previews to standard so that while I'm sleeping, Lightroom's doing all this processing, so therefore tomorrow when I want to go through these images, I can do so more quickly because all of the previews will already be rendered. All right, down here, apply during import. I'll add my metadata. Again, I could do develop settings. I can do keywords, so this would be St. Augustine, and that would be in Florida. All right. And I could continue on, only this time I better not because even though those were taken in the fort, we've got some other images of some birds here. All right, and that's all there is to it here as far as when I import with the second method where I'm adding the images to the catalog, but I'm not moving or copying them. I'm just adding them in place. However, before I go ahead and click import, I do want to just show you right down here where it says import preset. You can actually create your own presets. So once you pick whatever method's better for you, then create a preset and it'll kind of set this all up for you so that the next time you come in here, there'll be less things for you to change. In addition to presets, you can also go to compact mode, which is that little uh, icon down there in the lower left. And so next time you come in here, again, you don't have to view all of your images or anything, and you could still go in and do things like change your keywords if you want to. So it just kind of, for me, you know, I usually don't need to see the, the previews of the images. I might want to see them, but I don't need to see them. And so anytime in Lightroom where I can, I can automate things, it's really better for me because the more things are automated, whether it's building a, a 
file renaming template or creating an import preset, anytime I can do that, that means there's fewer opportunities for me to make a mistake. And so that's always good, especially when you're editing pictures late at night. All right, so excellent. I will click import and you can see what happens right over here in my little folder panel. It has just brought in the folder called St. Augustine and there are the 88 images. It's much quicker to, to import them because it's not copying the files, right? So it's a little sneaky there because I've already taken the time to copy all the files. And as you can see, it's rendering the standard size previews, which as I've told you before, it takes a little bit longer, but at this point in time in my workflow, I'm usually ready to go to bed and I let Lightroom just process this in the background. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this kind of clarifies which way you want to import your files. My name's Julianne Koss. Please join me again for another episode of The Complete Picture. <laughs>